Okay, in 23 words, I'm gonna tell you why I think this 2017 Dell XPS 15 is genuinely the best laptop you can buy. KB Lake, GTX 1050, massive battery, infinity edge bezels, eight ports, fingerprint reader, full HD or 4K touch, and cheaper than MacBook Pro. Okay, so I should probably expand on that a little bit for this review. Let me start by saying that I used to own last year's XPS 13 and 15, but for the past few months, I've been on the lookout for a new laptop that delivers that elusive combination of power and portability. Now, there's no shortage of great Ultrabooks coming in 2017, but the problem is most of them come with dual-core, low-power 7th generation Cable Lake processors like the XPS 13, ZenBook 3, and HP Spectre X360, which is all well and good for super thin and light ultra portables. But as a video producer, photo editor, and all-round power user, I want something a bit more. So I wanted a powerful laptop that could edit 4K video and even play some games, but that didn't weigh a ton and that wasn't really bulky. Now this is where the new XPS 15 9560 model comes in. In terms of design, it's pretty much identical to last year's model, which is no bad thing. This is still a great looking machine with its aluminium chassis, carbon fiber palm rests, and my favorite part, that infinity edge display, which is Dell's fancy term for saying it has really thin bezels. What that means is you get a 15.6 inch laptop in a 14 inch body, and generally it's just a lot more portable. Granted, it is still fairly heavy in terms of weight, tipping the scales at two kilograms if you go for the bigger 97 watt battery, but I can forgive that considering it's got a proper graphics card in it and it is no bigger than a 14 inch laptop. And despite its form factor, the XPS 15 manages to fit in two USB 3 ports, one USB-C with Thunderbolt 3, a full size HDMI, SD card reader, 3.5mm headphone jack, power and Kensington lock port. Another new feature here is a fingerprint reader. Dell hasn't exactly made it clear when it launched these which models came with reader and which didn't, and I think they also had some stock issues. Uh, and it works well with Windows Hello, so rather than tapping a password, you can just use your finger to log in. And it works pretty much every time, and it's a really nice feature to have. But if you are interested in buying the XPS 15, the big decision you're going to have to make is whether you go for the full HD or the 4K touch display version. The 4K panel is a glossy IGZO IPS touchscreen. Basically, it's sharper, more vibrant, and a more accurate display. So creative professionals may prefer it, but at the same time, it is very glossy and reflective, and it does have a big impact on that battery life. I'll talk more about battery later on, but essentially opting for that 4K screen drops your battery life from around 10 hours to about six hours which is why I went for the full HD version. It's got a non-touch matte screen, which I must admit doesn't look quite as vibrant as the uh, 4K panel, but it still looks great. And it's actually surprisingly color accurate. It covers 99% of the sRGB and 77% of the RGB color gamut. It pumps out a maximum brightness of 369 CDM, and it has a solid 1200 to one contrast ratio. So while the glossy Gorilla Glass on the 4K version may look a bit more vibrant, it turns out the full HD model is still a terrific screen. And I think it's the sensible choice. Not only is it cheaper, but you won't need to lower the resolution to play games and you get a much better battery life. Now let's talk about performance. What kind of speeds can we get out of this thing? Well, in terms of specs, you get the option of either an i5-7300HQ or an i7-7700HQ. There's also an i3 version available in the US. And they're all the latest 7th gen Cable Lake chips. They're all quad core. As well as that, you get eight, 16, or 32 gigs of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. And every model of the XPS 15 you go for, it doesn't matter what spec you go for, they all come with the new NVIDIA GTX 1050 graphics card, which has four gigs of VRAM. As for storage, well, I would avoid the entry level mold because that comes with an old 5400 RPM hard drive and a little 32 gig SSD. I'd opt to uh, go for one of the higher spec models and get either the 256, 512 or one terabyte PCIe SSDs. So I went for the full HD i7, 16 gig of RAM and 512 SSD. But what kind of performance can you expect from that? Well, let's start with a few games. In Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p and with high settings preset, the new XPS 15 scored an average of 43 frames per second in the benchmark. And playing the game, I saw similar results, hovering around that 40 FPS mark. And that's a solid playable frame rate for what is quite a demanding game at 1080p. In Fallout 4, again with high settings, we're looking at a very smooth 55 FPS average. So far, I'm really surprised how capable this 1050 graphics card is. And finally, in the GTA 5 benchmark, we're looking at a very impressive average of around 100 frames per second, again, with high settings at full HD in the benchmark. But looking at benchmarks isn't any fun, so I loaded up GTA Online, and with the same settings, including FXAA turned on, I was getting a smooth 60 to 70 FPS. <laughs> So 
So of course the 1050 in the XPS 15 won't compete with dedicated gaming notebooks, but at the 1080p resolution, which is quite sensible, you can actually get some fairly serious gaming done. I'm actually really impressed with it. And as for the performance bump over last year's model, the 1050 is around 30% faster than the 960M in most benchmarks. So that's all well and good, but one issue I do have with the XPS 15 is fan noise. It's pretty much dead silent 90% of the time when I'm browsing the web or playing videos. But when you're playing games, the fan on this thing whirs up and becomes quite loud to the point where you're probably going to want to plug in a pair of headphones. But the upshot of this is it remains impressively cool. Even when I was running benchmarks, this laptop never got hotter than 44 degrees Celsius. So unlike my MacBook Pros, which can get seriously hot, the XPS 15's thermals are very good and it never became uncomfortable to use. Speaking of noise though, one complaint a lot of people have about the Dell XPS line is coil wine, which is a slight electronic buzzing noise you might be able to hear. Now it's very much down to the luck of the draw, whether the model you get has it, but it seems to be the case for most people, including myself, that it's just about noticeable if you're in a quiet room and literally put the keyboard up to your ear. That's the only way I could hear a little bit of coil wine on my model. So for me, it's a complete non-issue, but if you have it worse on your machine, it's probably worth getting in contact with Dell to try and get a replacement. Now, what about battery life? Well, the new XPS 15s come with either a 56 or 97 watt hour battery, depending on the spec you go for. And that's up from last year's top end 84 watt hour battery. So the new model is not only more efficient in terms of hardware, you've got KB Lake and the Pascal graphics card, but it's also got a bigger battery. So what kind of life can you expect from it? Well, the one hour Netflix movie with 50% brightness and power saving mode on only dropped the battery 14%. So you can expect around seven hours of video playback, which is very good. Naturally, if you're playing games, you should have it plugged in to get the best performance, but with general use like web browsing, watching YouTube videos, doing some office work, I found I get a good 10 hours of use, which is around two hours more than I got with last year's model. And of course, opting for that 4K version will have a big impact on the battery. Last year's 4K model I used lasted for around four to five hours. So this year, although I haven't got that in uh, to review, I'd expect to see around six to six and a half hours of use. As for the typing experience, you get a full-size backlit chiclet style keyboard, which offers 1.3 millimeters of travel. It's actually very good. The keys are well spaced and feel responsive, but it does lack that sort of clacky feedback you get on a MacBook Pro, for example. So it could come across as a little bit spongy, but for me, it's absolutely one of the best Windows laptop keyboards you can get. The precision trackpad is just as good too. The smooth glass surface feels great under your finger, and I've got no complaints about the tracking or the responsiveness, although I still think you can make it better by enabling the enhanced pointer precision and increasing the pointer speed a bit in the settings to get an even smoother experience. So far, I'm extremely impressed by the XPS 15, but as good as it is, no laptop is perfect, and it does have a couple of issues. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, the fan noise can get a bit annoying when you're playing games, but another issue I have is with the webcam. It's still on the bottom bezel, which means it's basically looking up your nose all the time, so video conferencing or Skype video calls aren't the best on this thing. The bottom firing speakers are also quite tinny and lack any sort of real bass or depth. They're fine, but I definitely recommend a pair of headphones. And finally, as much as I do really like the design, it's pretty much identical to last year's model. It would have been nice to see some changes perhaps, or at least put it on a bit of a diet. At two kilograms, it is still quite heavy. The new MacBook Pro 15, for example, is nearly 200 grams lighter. So how much is the XPS 15 9560 gonna cost you? Well, prices start at about 1,350 pounds in the UK or $1,000 in the US since there's a cheaper i3 model available there. But for the spec I went for, you're looking at 1,600 quid or $1,700. And you can add 200 more to that if you want the 4K model. So we're definitely looking at some top end prices for these machines. But let me give you some context. The new MacBook Pro 15 with an equivalent spec to this is 2,700 pounds or $2,800. It's a grand more. Now you might say comparing uh, Apple this to Apple products is silly, they're always overpriced, but considering just how good this XPS 15 is, if you want a premium, powerful, and portable Windows laptop, I think it's worth it. But the XPS does have quite a lot of competition. You've got the MacBook Pro, the Razer Blade, the HP Spectre X360 15 inch, the Surface Book, the Asus ZenBook Pro, and even the Aspire V15 from Acer. There's certainly no shortage of high-end laptops to consider. But for me, nothing else comes close to giving that great all-round experience the XPS 15 offers. Yes, it is expensive, but I think it's absolutely worth it and I would highly recommend it. And 
I'm gonna go out there and say it. Right now, I genuinely think this is the best laptop you can buy. So that's what I think, but what do you reckon? Does it do everything you'd want or is it just too expensive? Let me know in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a like and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.